Imagine hearing an odd sound that can't be explained. Or seeing a shadowy figure move, but no one is there. A light flickers. You feel a cold breath on your neck. Is it your imagination? Or is it real? September 4th, 1998, Savannah, Georgia. 14-year-old Jason Cobb receives an antique wooden bed as a gift from his father. Sleeping in it on the first night, he feels an odd presence. As time goes on, more disturbances occur. Some far, far more, more frightening. frightening. December 1986, Seacliff, New York. A family makes a home movie of their Christmas play. When they watch it, a bright flash is seen in the picture. Suddenly, the image becomes startlingly clear. But there's no member of the family. Mid-1940s, South Park, Pennsylvania. Almost 20 years after the B&O Railroad bridges are built, stories begin to circulate about a mysterious glowing figure that frequents the tunnels under the bridge. Almost 60 years later, seven teenagers return to the site of the railway bridges to investigate the legend of Green Man Tunnel. Three areas of the country, three groups of people, all telling real, scary stories. When Jason received the antique bed as a gift from his father, he knew it was old, he knew it had history. What he did not know was that it was already occupied. The very first night I slept in my bed, I felt like somebody or something was watching me. There was something that was going on in his room that we couldn't explain. It was amazing how many different ways he was communicating with us. They don't go to the light when they first die. They're going to kind of stay where they died. I guess it was his bed, and he couldn't leave it. Me and my dad like to go to um, antique shops and auctions. Jason and I went to the um, gallery, the antique auction gallery, and we were in hopes of finding an antique bed for his Christmas present. In the corner of, of the auction company was his um, this bed. The very first night I slept in my bed, I felt like somebody or something was watching me. They were leaning over my bed and just staring at me. The um, very next night, I felt like a cold breath was like somebody was breathing on my neck. You know, I thought it was just a, just a draft or something. When this happened, I didn't tell my parents because I thought it was just me being a little paranoid. The last thing I thought it would be was a ghost, you know, messing with me. On the third night, I saw the pillow in my room. It dented in and it was flattened right in front of my eyes. And that's when he came talk to me. My mom didn't believe me. And I said, Jason, I said, there's got to be a logical reasoning for it. Well, I had a picture of my grandparents on one of my nightstands. The next morning when I woke up, my grandparents' picture was shattered. And that's when my mom was a little hysterical. She knew it wasn't me because I went and break my own grandparents' picture. That's when we went to his daddy and said, there's something going on here. He says, well, it must be a spirit or a ghost or whatever. Then it entered into my head to, to ask the spirit if he wanted to uh, tell me his name. He said, whoever's out there, whatever you want, if you're here, write something to us. And I put down a pencil and paper. Walked out of the room. Shut the door. When we came back, he had wrote down Danny Seven. That pretty much freaked me out right there. I found it very disturbing. I didn't want to sleep in there at all. Even though I said I've always believed in spirits and ghosts, but it was always somebody else's experience. It never was my experience. He wrote a note about his mother died in the bed in 1899, and that made us kind of sad, I guess, but it was kind of confusing because we didn't know if his mother had died in the bed or if Danny had died in the bed. He liked to play little jokes on us. He didn't want me to sleep in the bed at all. That was his bed. I laid on the bed and said, Danny, this is, um, my bed now. I was turned around to the closet where I couldn't see the other wall. I heard something cling off the wall. He said he heard it come off the wall. And I turned around and it looked like it was hovering right where it was hanging. And then it came flying at me. His terracotta head came across the room. I moved out of the way and it hit the um, closet door and shattered into a thousand pieces. I didn't know he had the power to do something like that. Ten minutes later, he went back to his room and it was trash. The curtains were down, uh, the lamps was put down, the boys put the bed in the car again, and it went off to auction. And that's the last time it was at the house.
When Danny's bed left Jason's house, so did Danny. The Savannah newspaper had, um, they had done a story on Danny's bed. My wife insisted that I purchase the bed. We had a security system and we never had any kind of difficulty with it. It was going off sometimes two and three times in the evening. A lot of our local customers that frequent the shop, they refused to come in. And so we decided to sell the bed. We had heard about Danny's bed, the haunted bed. And my daughter said, oh, I've got to have that bed. I've heard that he could get mad if you, like, sleep on the bed. That's why I never really mess with the bed. When I'd go in Danny's room, I'd feel a cold, uh, damp feeling. Those who are willing to listen are sometimes also lucky enough to hear. Psychic Connie Brannon was brought in to listen to, to Danny. Danny. Danny is an energy form at this time versus a form like us, and he can manifest himself as a person, but he doesn't. He, he manifests his energy different ways. Spirits can attach themselves to anything, to a car, to a ring, anything in their prior life that was very special to them in some way. The bed was a family heirloom, so when he died, he prefers to come visit this. This is something he knows. This is something he's comfortable with. I'm hearing the bed needs to have its own special place where it's not moved anymore. I feel, I, I feel sadness. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep, sad, lonely feeling. I don't want to sell the bed because I feel like Danny needs a permanent place. And if my home and my garage is the permanent place for him, then I'm happy with that. Who or what appears for a fraction of a second in the flash of light on Heather's family Christmas video? <laughs> First, Heather and her family ignored the strange things that were happening around their nearly 100-year-old home. But when, when they, they found, found a haunting figure in the burst of light caught between frames on the family's Christmas video, they, they were no longer, longer certain that they, they were the only ones, ones in the house. We found blood. I've been hearing screams. The strange sounds. He's here and he's watching. She dug up the dolls. They were buried along the foundation of the house. They have captured the ghost. On the tape. It was very real. Tonight, I'm going to see the ghost. He's there, he's on that tape, and it is freaky. This house is pretty old. It's, it's about 100 years old. It probably has some pretty juicy history to it. Over the years that we've lived in the house, we've had things that have occurred, which uh, we've always attributed to the ghost, his little ways of showing us that he's here and he's kind of watching and knows what's going on. This is a very, very friendly ghost. <laughs> he's, uh, he's never hurt anybody. I was gardening in the backyard and unearthed a china doll that had been buried that looked kind of like a Cupid doll or something from the 40s. And then the next year, I think I was digging in pretty much the same place and I dug up two more dolls. Well, he's always haunted me when I was a couple years younger and I'm, he's still haunting me a little now. My two friends and I had a sleepover and I got up to go to the bathroom and it was pitch black and I saw these two red eyes across the hallway staring at me. So I motioned to my friends, I said, look, look what I see. And we all saw it at the same time, screamed and ran downstairs. None of us came back up because we were too afraid to see what it was. A while after we moved in and we noticed this blood or what we think is blood dripping around a doorway. And we at first thought that possibly it was something that was just bleeding through the plaster, but we could see when we took the wallpaper off that there was nothing there. Within a short period of time, maybe six months or so later, I would notice that the red spots were back on the door. It, it was just completely unexplainable. What a lot of people are missing from their ghost stories is the actual proof to show you right here. And I have that, my family has that. We have a videotape of a ghost. We were watching a video of our Christmas when I was, I think, three. You could see a figure between two frames of videotaping and we thought, what is that? We were kind of bowled over by the whole thing. We, we couldn't figure out what it was. It was a new tape. It wasn't anything we had taped. We know that for a fact. We just knew it, it was something mysterious. For a while, we didn't let Heather watch the video because we thought it would scare her. 
And as a matter of fact, Drew has not seen it yet. Tonight I'm going to see the ghost for the first time. Hope I'm going to stay in the room. It's going to be very scary for me, and I don't know what I'm going to do. We have captured a ghost. What did Heather and her friends see on that tape that made them scream? The image of Heather's ghost follows. Retired Special Agent Tom Benton has worked on thousands of cases in his 27 years with the FBI. Special Agent Benton has never seen a ghost. At, at least, least not, not yet. yet. I have here the tape that um, is the original tape of, uh, that contains this uh, alleged ghost. It was a new tape. It wasn't anything we had taped. We know that for a fact. But I think a videotape is um, an excellent piece of evidence. You would uh, want to f freeze whatever frames there were that perfectly, uh, or as best, identified the perpetrator. So why don't we go take a look at it? And this is rolling at regular speed, 30 frames a second. And you can see it's changing from one image to the other, and as it changes, you see a flash of what looks to be like a couple of flashes of red in there. So there is something there, it's just at regular speed. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, so let's go back. <laughs> Stepping back one frame at a time. There is one. Okay, well that's not just a flash. There's something in there. Let's uh, frame enhance it. And let's blow it up. And there it is. It appears to be a um, female wearing uh, some type of Western attire that would be worn in the late 1800s or so. This appears to be a rifle, that being the button, that being the barrel. Here you can see the rifle butt is close to the body. Here it's pulled away. The, the question that I have here is um, if you're saying this is one thirtieth of a second, basically, is that correct? Yes, that is one thirtieth of a second from the one frame to the next. In microseconds here, you, you have two different positions. That type of movement in, say, one thirtieth of a, a second is uh, again consistent of what the human body can do. That in itself is, uh, you know, peculiar and, and questionable. After reviewing the tape, I would conclude that there is no satisfactory explanation as to how that image uh, came up on the videotape. What, what is, is it in those tunnels that has been scaring teens for almost 60 years? The legend of the Green Man has been passed down by countless South Park, Park Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania teens for decades. Although, Although the stories differ, Two details, details remain the same. same. There is a mysterious figure that haunts the railroad tunnels, and he does not welcome visitors. My name is Jonathan, and tonight me and my friends are going to go find the green man. I'm going to Johnny's Donner to meet Nick, Bria, Michaeline, Shannon, Addie, Tony. We're going to discuss our plans tonight. We're probably going to go to Green Man's Tunnel. He was telling me about that rumor from school, about that Paul kid that disappeared. That's not true. Yeah, it is. No, 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 it's not true. Yeah. That tunnel was haunted. I am not going. I am not going. No, we, I want to go, but like, don't you find out what actually You have to put coming back if we go. It's not going to be a scary thing. You just go find out a story. Yeah. Look at a tunnel. Yeah. The legend of the Green Man goes back to the mid-1950s. There was a man that worked for the electric company. This old guy lived up there in a shack years ago. And he was climbing a pole in a storm. He used to take a bath in the creek, and the creek back then was sulfur. And he got hit by lightning. He got hit with lightning. He was a man that was injured in a 
a high tension wire accident. He was electrocuted and didn't die. He was just disfigured. He had sort of a green tint to his hair. Children would be scared of him. Green look to his face. We would be scared of him. I'm not afraid of green men. If you go down this road, there's one, two, three tunnels. Two tunnels the creek runs through, and one tunnel's abandoned up in the hall up there. That's where the old guy lived. I know. I don't really want to do this. Yeah, I you know what? You wish I would be the first one to die, more like it. Supposedly, Green Man haunts three tunnels. A couple kids went up there, and then this one kid, Paul, was uh, was found missing. Like, no one ever found him. And uh, the last place he was was at Green Man's tunnel. Is this that guy? Is this that guy we're looking for? Yeah. You Elmer? Yeah, I'm Elmer. We're heading up to uh, Green Man's Green Tunnel. Man. Do you see the signs up in the woods up there? No trespassing signs? He wanted to come down and talk to you. Oh, yeah? People used to come up there and bother him, and he'd come down through the woods and scare him away. Do you think we're stupid for going? That's up to you. Where is How the tunnel? How do we is get like there? Follow this path up through the woods here, through this up. hall up. Is that way? Up there? Yes. There's a creek that runs through there. That was the creek you got electrocuted in? Supposedly, yes. That's the creek. Follow the creek here, all the way up to the tunnel. It runs through the tunnel. There's an old road bed. Right here's where the man used to live. Just make sure you get out of there before it gets dark. Just look for that creek. That's what I'm looking for. I'll see it. Just remember this fallen trunk in case we get lost. Well, you guys can go down that way. We'll go down there. We'll meet up later. we'll just split up. Yeah, we'll just split up. We don't really know the woods, and there's three tunnels, and we we won't get up to all of them if we stay together, so we're going to split up, cover more ground. Bye, guys. This might be last time we see you. All right. I'm born and raised around here. I know what's up in them woods in the hall. That's the creek. You guys, the creek. Remember, keep going until you see the creek. We have to I used to run that creek when I was little and play down there, and there's things that you should leave alone. That's the front of you guys. This is it. I can't believe we made it. I'm not afraid of you going. You go first. Something happened there one day. Something had to start the story. I heard that the story is actually based on a true person, a real man that lived down there. I think he just wants to be left alone. Scaring me. Something right over here. Finally, he wasn't down there. He wasn't down there. Right? Yeah, what what did you like? guys what did you One guy wanted to show his girl, you know, Green Man's tunnel, so he took her down there. And he, they got out of the car and he said, see, there's nothing going on here. And there was this man comes running out of the woods and they both got in their car and locked the doors and he's running around, jumping on the car. And of course, they took off frightened. Well, there's like complete darkness in here. I don't think he's in here. We should go check another tunnel, guys. What? Guys? We should go check the other tunnel. I don't see. I want to go home. He said we should be out of here when it's dark. Yeah, yeah. and it's been dark a long it's been dark time a ago. Long time. I think that he follows people through all the tunnels. I think he's in all of them. But mainly, I think he's in the third one. You guys, look. It's the last last one. I said we split up. Yeah, yeah, I'll go up. You'll go? Yeah. He's gonna be in here. After that, they've been in there too long. The more of us should probably go in. We should find yeah, them. Two or three or more of us should go up there. We haven't. I'll go in by myself. I don't really. You sure? You sure yeah, because we need. I mean, you need to stay with Shannon. We need to get in there. To this day, when we drive down there, I lock my doors 
and I close my windows. 33, 40, 50 years later, you got to believe, why is this story still hanging on? What are you guys doing out here? We are just looking for a green man. There's no green man down here. All right, you guys should all be leaving here and go head home. Obviously, someone was living there because it was like eating food. It might have been the green man. Whatever was living there was creepy, I don't know. There's no green man around here. That's, uh, that's all myth. These are the stories of real people from across the country who have had experiences with the unknown. If you have a story to tell, visit our website at realscarystories.com or write to us at Highland Entertainment, P.O. Box 2036, Old Chelsea Station, New York, New York, 10113. Tell us your real scary story. We don't want to. You're a little cold. Yeah, me too. And sisters. What's your problem? I don't have a problem. You both have problems. Can you feel the love? Ow! Ah! Seventh Heaven. Weeknights at 7, 6 Central on ABC Family.